just want to talk about the different kind of challenges that obviously you face. Everything we're going to cover here is really dealing with preparing content uh, for some use, taking content in one format or in one area, preparing it for use as a report or preparing it for use in a submission, et cetera, as well further down the line. So there's obviously a lot of challenges uh, with that. One of them things being often the process is slow. It can be quite a time consuming process. Uh, it's resource intensive. It involves a lot of people potentially and kind of different technology as well. And often the process is quite manual, whether that's putting the, a report together, uh, merging everything manually and applying all the various elements can be quite a manual task. Um, and obviously anything that's manual introduces an element of risk there as well. Often because you're using multiple tools and potentially tools not designed for that purpose, often it becomes quite a complex uh, solution that involves a lot of training, et cetera, as well. So quite a few challenges that you may face in any one of these kind of content preparation uh, use cases that I'll cover uh, today. Just to explain what we do, ultimately DocShifter is a platform and what I'm gonna show you here is how DocShifter can help when it's kind of uh, connected to uh, Viva repositories, what it can do to help you and support some, some of those use cases. But ultimately we're a platform that uh, can take content from one repository analyze it, transform it, enrich the content, and return the results somewhere else. And obviously here we're focusing on Viva Vault repositories. It can ultimately be other repositories as well. If you've got SharePoint repositories still in house or legacy documentum environments, et cetera, obviously all of those environments can be used as well. We're focusing here specifically on Viva. And ultimately what we're using is it's a rendering platform. So it's a technology that's used and a lot of people consider rendering just to be converting from one format to another and typically one format to PDF for use in a submission. And that's one part of what it can do. But ultimately they can do an awful lot more uh, as well. And that's what I'm gonna show you here. So you can take content from different repositories, Vault, you know, Cara, you know, SharePoint, et cetera, whatever it may be in many different formats we can perform various actions on the content, the individual documents themselves, pieces of content. You can validate the content in its word format, uh, ensure that it's uh, text searchable. If it was a scanned image where it has images in it, you want to make sure that the text can be searched through, merge multiple documents together or split documents up so they don't exceed file size limits, apply headers, footers, pagination, et cetera add watermarks, you know, bookmarks and cover pages to make sure reviewers can navigate through the content as easily as possible, apply or remove security and validate the PDF content, et cetera. So it's just some of the capabilities. Now, depending on the use case you're looking for, if it's to create health authority compliant output, you may be just using a subset of those capabilities, converting it in a specific way with bookmarks, et cetera, as well. But if you're looking at using it for use case like reports, we can couple multiple, uh, a number of those capabilities together to allow for, for that. Rather than it being on an individual document basis, merge documents together, add headers and footers, pagination across it, all of a sudden you're able to automate the creation of reports. That's what I'll look at and show you, uh, for example, here with binders. So again, many different use cases for beyond just the conversion from one format to another. So ultimately what we're looking at doing is, uh, you know, saving time for you, uh, optimizing your processes through automation. And what we're going to do is build workflows in the background that are fully automatic, that combine different functional capabilities in a specific way uh, to treat your content for a specific use case. But the idea is it's configured and it's left running in the background, you know, for full automation. So with that, we'll focus on the first use case of actually rendering binders, taking binders that you may have in Viva uh, Vault and actually rendering them. And that can be for various different types of reports. Maybe quickly before we do that, if just a quick poll, if that's okay, just those of you that are connected, if you're using Viva or Vault or you're planning to, how many of you are actually using binders or planning to use binders right now? Uh, I know we'll talk a little bit about content plans as well later, but specifically binders in this case. So the questions are coming in, obviously getting some good results. Most people are, which is probably why most of you have joined. Um, great, thank you. There's some of you, quite a few of you are not, and we can maybe touch on that a little bit as we go as well. Excellent, thanks very much, everybody. So again, that's largely most people on the call are um, about a, th a third perhaps or not. 
uh, that may be because of content plan use and so on as well. But we'll talk about that as we go through. So with that, just firstly, what a report actually is. So really we're talking, when we talk about a report, it's a it's one or more files that are merged together into one or more multiple enriched PDF files. So we're gonna take multiple individual source documents, merge them together, kind of enrich that as well to generate a report in either one or multiple PDFs. So we may add things like cover pages at the beginning, for example, merge files, add a cover page at the start, add a table of content that spans the entire report. So you may have individual documents that have their own TOCs, but at the report level, you may need an overall kind of report table of content for all of the content in that binder, that report as well. On top of that, you need uh, obviously bookmarks that span the entire collection of documents. So each document will have potentially their own bookmarks, but when you merge them together, you need to ensure that you have a complete set that spans the entire collection and that obviously everything navigates correctly. You can obviously add pagination. This is simple pagination with just one, one volume, if you like. Um, but obviously you might need to add pagination that's not only a page number, but also the volume number, if you like, if you're creating multiple output PDF files, because the file size is too large. You can obviously add bookmarks to span everything, as I mentioned, apply things like watermarks behind pages while things are in draft, or to include different pieces of metadata from your repository, uh, like Viva Vault, and apply them in the header footer or as watermarks as well. And obviously you need to ensure that things like hyperlinks continue to work as well. So really that's what a report is. We're talking about collecting multiple documents together, merging them and applying various elements depending on the specific purpose of it. Uh, so that's what I mean. And in this case, uh, the focus is gonna be on how to achieve that where you're, you've created the collection of content in a binder. So with that, if you look at what DocShifter Reports does, is it the only manual step, if you like, is at the beginning, which is actually creating the collection of documents. So creating that binder, or it could be a zip file if it's in Viva Vault as well. You could have a zip file containing multiple documents. That can actually be the starting point of a report as well. We'll focus here on binders, but there are other ways you can create those collections too. So you literally have that one point, the, the creating the binder, and then leveraging metadata that's available in Viva Vault, uh, whatever repository, we then ultimately convert each individual document to PDF if it's not already been created. Uh, we prepare those uh, PDFs to ensure they're compliant. They have the individual correct bookmarks, et cetera, in place. We sort them in the right order. We merge them together. We add cover pages uh, at the beginning of the, the entire report, or if it's multiple uh, volumes, ensure that each volume has a cover page as well. We paginate um, the entire report we apply headers, footers, bookmarks, tables of contents at the beginning, watermarks applied if need be, and then we ensure the final results are fully compliant with any health authority uh, requirements, depending on where you're going to be sharing or who you're going to be sharing the content with. And the results are then stored back into Vault. Everything here is automatic, apart from that creation of the binder up front. That's something you need to provide, and that's then what would actually go through uh, the platform. In the case of Vault specifically, um, really the process is we monitor for binders. We're talking binders specifically. We monitor for binders that reach a specific status in uh, in Viva. So once you take a binder, you set a status uh, to ready to be uh, rendered or whatever that status is. And that's something you would need to configure uh, in your life cycles is to say, this is a status that it needs to go through. And that's how DocShifter would know to pick up that uh, binder to be processed. So basically in this case, I've configured it that it's going to look for a ready to be processed status for my binders. When it reaches that, it's going to pull that binder into my workflow and then do what it's, uh, what's actually requested in the flow. What it can do then is it can route based on the report type. So depending on the type of report, if it's a clinical report or a, you know, a, a report that's just merging documents together, or even maybe an SOP or an annual report, whatever it may be, you can have different routes for different types of reports as well and do different things with them, apply different options and parameters, et cetera. So you can easily kind of pull and leverage the metadata available to automate uh, this process and apply slightly different parameters depending on the purpose. So if you just follow, look at this, the actual steps involved for uh, rendering the binder, 
Uh, ultimately, we create a binder, and that can be either creating it, you know, however you create a binder normally, manually, uh, you know, within Viva Vault. It can also be that you create the binder by exporting a content plan. So right now we don't uh, we don't handle content plans directly, but if you export your content from your content plan into a binder, it can be processed that way. And we will add support for content plans uh, in the future. But the idea with the the binders is that they're available to more people. They're simpler to use as well, and that's really the purpose of what we're doing here. We're merging multiple contents for simpler report reports rather than large submissions that the content plans are perhaps more geared towards. But ultimately, yeah, you can export the content plan, get the binder, um, add your content to the binder, set the status of the binder. And once you set that status, then Docshuter picks up the binder, renders it, uh, and stores the PDF in or PDFs in back in Vault. If they can be stored elsewhere as well, if you want, you don't have to store them back in Vault. You could store them externally if you want as well to file shares or to SharePoint for collaboration and so on as well, or to multiple places simultaneously. Because binders don't have the concept of a rendition, we then create a relationship between the results in uh, Vault um, and the original binder. So you can actually find, create, see that relationship between the two and say, here's the PDF that's been generated and you can easily find the binder uh, that that was created from and vice versa. And the same thing with all the individual documents within the binder. If you like, you can create a relationship between each document and the resulting uh, kind of rendered binder as well. So if we look at that, maybe look at the just this initial uh, step, you know, setting the status. I'm not going to talk about creating uh, the binder and adding the content. Um, that's obviously something you do directly in Viva Vault. So I'll skip that step and go straight to setting the status. So I'm just showing you here a simple binder. In this case, just a simple uh, section for 2.6 and it, uh, ECTD submission. Uh, and I'm just take, taking multiple documents, wanting to merge them together into a single uh, single file. So I've got multiple files here in the binder and I just need to set my status to be, in this case, within this life cycle, one of the statuses available is ready to be processed. That ready to be processed is what DocShifter is looking for, is once it sees a binder in that status, it then will uh, pick it up uh, for me. So once it's ready to be processed, the binding is rendered. So we'll go through a couple of steps and you can see those steps in here. We will go to an in-processing step, which is an interim step that basically is it takes it from the original step uh, status, sets it to in-processing so we know that it's actually being processed. And then once it finishes, it actually sets the next step and uh, st uh, status in the life cycle. In this case, processed by DocShifter. That could be whatever step uh, stage you want it to be. It can be called whatever you like. We're just kind of showing you those statuses here uh, just for demo purposes. So once it's reached that status, the PDFs are obviously stored in Vault as well. Um, and they're stored separately uh, in this case because obviously there's no concept of a, of a rendition. So you can't find it in the way you would with a document to look at the renditions. Um, there's ultimately a rendition created uh, for you. So I have my PDF uh, in here, which you can open, and then you have all the elements of the merged kind of binder, all the contents merged together with whatever report parameters you wanted to set on that binder. You could, if you like, have simply merged all the contents into a single PDF. You don't have to apply cover pages, overlays, et cetera. You could simply use it to merge everything into a single PDF, and that's it, fully automatically. In this case, I'm just showing you with some other reporting elements added as well. Again, if you look at that within uh, Adobe instead, you have you can see obviously you've got your bookmarks uh, created. You have uh, cover pages that may be pulling pieces of metadata from Viva Vault to automatically populate and generate the cover page. So we can pull information about the document, the binder itself, the health authorities being submitted to, who created the binder, when it was last updated, things like that. Any piece of metadata we can pull and apply onto these cover pages or to headers, footers, overlays, et cetera, as well. So we've got our tables of contents were added automatically as well. So that's a table of content for the entire report. So it spans the entire report uh, of all the documents that were included, not just a single, it's the entire collection also. On top of that, if you wanted to set it, if it's for compliance purposes, you can ensure that the entire technical specs are set as well. So it's the correct PDF version. You have inherit Zoom set on all your bookmarks and your hyperlinks. 
you know, your view settings are correct, the correct level, number of levels of bookmarks, et cetera. All of those things can be defined as well. So what you end up with is a report that's submission ready. And it's actually really health authority ready. It's ready to be shared with a health authority directly. What we do at the end is, uh, as well as create that relationship between the binder and the results. Um, so just showing you one of those uh, screens, we ultimately show that uh, link between the document itself uh, and the binder. So we see the results. We can easily find the binder that that PDF was generated from and vice versa. So that was just quickly going through obviously the binder. That can be used for whatever type of report you need, whether it's just simply to merge multiple documents together, whether it's to create kind of slightly more complex reports that need various elements added, for anything in between, you can obviously configure it to use uh, to meet different use case needs. Just looking at some of the other cases as well, where you're dealing with uh, Viva Vaults, just quickly going through some automated word content preparation. Uh, this is really where we're looking at taking individual documents in word format still, and actually allowing you to have workflows set up that integrate to your life cycles, working in the same way. Once you set a status on your content, uh, it will automatically take the documents and identify issues with the Word document, kind of generate a report that shows you what the issues are and potentially fix some of those issues as well. So things you'll look for are issues with paragraphs, font styling, uh, table issues, hyperlink issues, image-based issues, uh, you know, resolution set too low and so on. Basically identifying problems as early as possible rather than downstream when you're trying to get the submission out the door or put the submission together and then you're identifying uh, issues with your content, it's a little bit late. So this is, helps you identify things much earlier on in the life cycle. These can run at any point in the life cycle, depending on how you configure it. The results can then be stored back into Vault, whether that's a report that shows you what issues it's found or the fixed document. Either way, they can be stored back into Viva Vault. You don't have to run all the checks. There's a big list of 50 plus checks that can, and fixes that can be run. You can configure it to only run certain checks at different points in the life cycle as well. And you can configure what, whether you just want to fix it or if you want to just report on it. So again, if you look at a very simple workflow here, this is just monitoring a, a vault repository. It's then going to run my document validation and store the results in this case as a rendition. So what I'm doing here is I'm monitoring individual documents and I can filter this based on document type and subtype as well. I can then filter it and say when that document reaches a ready to be processed status. And again, you can decide what that status is. Once it reaches that status, it should be pulled in, that content should be pulled in. And then the whichever options you decide to configure, which options you, which checks you want to perform, which fixes you want to perform, they can be configured specifically. And then the results are uh, stored back. In this case, as a rendition of a specific rendition type, to the original source document. So because binders, there's no concept of rendition. In this case, it's different. We're working on the individual uh, source documents. Those we can uh, return the results back as a rendition itself. Um, or if you're talking about a fixed Word document, you can store the results back as a new version of the document as well. So if you look at the results from that, um, I take a document and I, again, I, I just set my status here to be, I've got a simple Word document set the status to be ready to be processed. That document is then goes through, gets picked up by the workflow, is processed fully automatically. And it, in this case, it created the results as an imported rendition type. And again, you could have different rendition types. So in this case, I'm just using that mechanism to store my validation report on the Word document, for example. Um, you could, of course, create the results as a completely separate PDF. It's not a rendition. You could store them separately if you wanted to. But the report ultimately kind of tells you what issues it's found, it gives you info about the Word document, what checks it ran, and how many of each issue it found. For each check it performs, how many issues did it identify, how many was it able to correct, and how many did it leave unresolved. In this case, I ran a report. I wasn't trying to fix anything. So this report shows everything uh, is left unresolved because I just created a report on it. So it just kind of summarizes that and then details exactly where those issues are, where they can be found in the document so somebody can go and make those updates as needed. Or you can let it fix the issues. This is a very simple, sorry, it's a very simple document, obviously, as an example, uh, with various issues in it. You have issues with heading numbers out of sequence. So we've got heading numbers here. We've got uh, section one, then down to three. So we're skipping two. 
We've got um, padding spaces in the headings. We've got empty paragraphs or empty pages, potentially. We've got watermarks behind pages, tables not fitting the page width, uh, comments remaining, and images not in line with the text, and so on. So just some simple examples of issues that you could have. If you ran that through with the fix options, ultimately we'll go through and automatically fix a lot of those things or the things that you told it to. So it can fix issues with your hyperlinks and you know, removing external hyperlinks, for example, or links to websites that shouldn't be there. It fixes your heading numbers so that now sort of uh, correctly in sequence, removing any empty padding spaces if you want it. Your tables are now fitting the page width so you have less fewer kind of font size issues. Images set to be in line with text. Uh, comments removed, if you like, empty paragraphs removed, and so on. So again, you can decide what fixes you do and don't apply. So you could end up with a fixed Word document fully automatically, all by simply by set, storing the document, setting it to a specific status, and letting DocShifter automatically kind of uh, fix the content for you. Of course, you do both. You can fix it and generate a report that tells you what issues it found and what issues are remaining. The other part obviously as a rendering platform is obviously the ability to render. So one of the things we can also do is, you know, generate multiple renditions simultaneously. So not view of just viewable renditions, but renditions that are fully health authority ready. So not even submission ready, just submission ready, but truly health authority ready as well. So we can take content coming in from different formats and prepare them for one or more different health authorities simultaneously. Now your PDFs, you may standardize and use one common spec for multiple health authorities, but in some instances, you may want to have slightly different PDFs, even though the source is the same, the way you bookmark it may be slightly different in Japan than the way you bookmark it in Europe or the US, for example. So you want to have a different rendition created or at least different bookmarks created. So we can do all of that automatically for you as well and store multiple renditions. So again, it would just be a question of having an automated workflow that's basically, again, leveraging the metadata in your repository basically to find out do you need for example a japanese rendition do you need a european one a us one etc if you do basically we just look for specific uh, values of metadata in your repository in this case just a japanese um, kind of flag somewhere of some piece of metadata if that value is set to true that a japanese rendition is required then it will go through create a japanese rendition and the same for each region that you want to set up in the workflow and then each region may have slightly different specs. So the way the PDF is created, the way it's bookmarked, the way you know the version, the PDF version, all those parameters can be slightly different for each country to save you time in the content preparation. Instead of creating one spec and then having to manipulate that for each country you're submitting to, you can create all the necessary PDFs upfront automatically in one go. So again, we can set a huge amount of detailed parameters for each country with 99% maybe the same, uh, just 1% may be different, but again, it can save a lot of time with the quantity of documents you're dealing with. So again, there in this case, if I take that documents and I just say it's ready to be processed, this is a rendering uh, request. Um, I simply click it through, it goes through to be processed by DocShifter. And we end up with one or more renditions created, just showing you a couple of examples. It can replace your viewable rendition if you like. So you can set it to replace the viewable rendition or it can create a different rendition type if you want, or it could be a completely separate uh, PDF object as well. But if I have, for example, my uh, European PDF, I may well have my, my bookmarks, my tables, figures, et cetera. They may kind of be scattered throughout the bookmark tree. So I had them wherever they appear in the order that they appear within the document throughout the bookmark structure. But in Japan, for example, I may want to group them. I may sort of group those tables at the end. I don't have them spread throughout the bookmark tree. I group them at the end. So I see them all there together at the end and not throughout the tree. So even though the content is exactly the same, the way it's bookmarked, and maybe some of the other technical specs could be slightly different. But again, those renditions could have all been created simultaneously instead of having creating one and then somehow manually creating or having a process to manually create the other regions. Once you have PDFs, whether you created them with the uh, you know, Viva Vault rendering, whether you created them with DocShifter rendering or other rendering tools or manually with Adobe, whatever tool it is, you can also then automatically validate the PDFs as well. So again, you can validate your PDFs at the end during publishing and it will do perform some PDF, individual PDF document validation steps as well. But for that, you do have to, um, you actually have to 
sorry, I just had to turn off, my monitor was about to turn off. Uh, you actually have to publish to be able to do that. So you have to create your submission, draft, publish, and then do the valid, perform the validation on it to be able to do that. So really what we're talking about here is being able to, the moment you have any PDFs, you know, the moment you have a rendition, you can already begin running some checks on those PDFs to identify issues, which may be from how the PDF is being generated, but could also be content related. So it allows you to do this much, much earlier in your process, identify issues earlier. So when it comes to submission time or putting the submission together, you're not at that point identifying issues that you could have found much earlier on. So with that, what we're talking about is again, from any repository uh, in Viva setting again, uh, again, it, uh, this can all be configured within your existing life cycles. And again, you're here, you're checking for PDF specifics, a bit like the word validation just in PDF, but obviously you're checking for things like your PDF version, your view settings, problems with bookmarks, hyperlinks, file sizes, font embedding, uh, security settings, zoom levels, optimization, all those things that you need to ensure are set for every individual document, we can check all of those things fully automatically for you. Or generate a report for you in Viva Vault or potentially automatically fix the PDF, of course, as well. So again, you don't have to perform all the checks. You can configure which checks you run and you can have slightly different parameters for different regions, depending on the number of bookmark levels and so on that may differ. So with that, again, the results would be uh, a report, I'll show you the report. It just ultimately summarizes whether that document PDF is compliant. If it's not compliant, it means it's found some issues. In this case, it shows you which checks I ran in this for this report to be generated and whether each check uh, passed or failed. So all of my uh, prerequisites, my PDF properties, settings, my security, my initial view settings, each check has it passed or failed. So I see that sort of simple checklist at the beginning. And then I see the detail of, well, it, pat, it failed the font embedding. Then it tells me later on which fonts weren't embedded, which hyperlinks have problems. It tells you which page they're on, et cetera, as well. So it kind of gives you a detailed summary. Of course, some of these things could have been fixed automatically as well. Just like in Word, we could reprocess the PDF file to make it fully compliant if you need. Some other use cases. So what I focused on here really were um, the ability to obviously generate these reports. So render the binders. And that's, we're using our reports engine to do that. It's one single platform, but ultimately combining different capabilities. So reports, we've got the validation tools for documents and PDF to validate the word and the PDF content. PDF plus to create the renditions. There's also potentially need to sometimes kind of render content coming in by email. So we can monitor inboxes with our DocShift email monitor inboxes directly for correspondence or any other communication with attachments, process those automatically, store the results in Viva or, or any other repository that you need as well. Any to any would allow you to not only create PDF output, but also create output in other formats, whether it's HTML, XML, whether it's creative kind of reverse rendering and going from a PDF back to a Word document or from a PDF to an Excel document um, or text or whatever it may be. So any to any allows you for those, you know, other output formats beyond just purely a PDF. OCR obviously allows you to OCR the content and insights just gives you uh, an insight into the processing that's taking place, who's processing what within your organization. So you can cross charge between departments if you're splitting costs, et cetera, as well. Or if you're a service provider or CRO, you can identify for individual customers, how much uh, processing have you performed for them? Etc. cetera, as well, as well as identifying times of day when your systems aren't used so much and the fonts that have been used within your content. So you can identify rogue fonts up front and, and figure out which kind of groups are actually um, including fonts they shouldn't be as well. So just a couple of quick conclusions. Um, everything that we're talking about here is really with an, uh, the, an aim of reducing risk. So again, streamlining your process, identifying issues earlier to give yourselves more time you know, achieving content compliance earlier at the end of the day, uh, hopefully helping you with simultaneous, achieving simultaneous global submissions. If you're able to create multiple renditions simultaneously, obviously that can support you in that goal as well. But the idea being to accelerate how long it takes you to prepare all of that content. With that, um, I did just want to ask one, we have a couple of quick poll questions at the end. Sorry, I know I've gone through quickly, 
But please, if you are interested in having a more detailed conversation or have any questions, please reach out through the link in the chat session. Um, again, I want to thank everybody for the time. I know it's getting close to the end of the day for those of us here in Europe. Uh, for those in the US, I hope you have a good rest of your day, a good afternoon. And again, hopefully speak to some of you again soon, either one-on-one -on -one or potentially at one of the conferences that we'll be at soon. So thanks again, everybody, for your time and hopefully speak to you again soon. Thank you. Take care.